Hello, please leave a message after the tone. This first one comes from Jade from Seattle. After college, Jade and her boyfriend Steve wanted to live together. They had talked about this since they were freshmen in college together often, and eventually they started their lives together. But unfortunately, all has not been happily ever after so far. For some time, almost every day after work, Jade will come home to unwanted gifts from a stranger. Gift baskets full of things like jewelry and other expensive items, and on other occasions, flowers with letters. But every single time there would be a gift basket left, it would include a photo of Jade out in public with family, friends, her dog, or her boyfriend. One day, Jade took the basket into the house and began crying, causing Steve to come running to her side. Steve was furious, as he knew this wasn't just a sign of harassment, but also stalking. Steve would later install security cameras around the house. After a nice dinner one night, Jade was taking a bath and was listening to some relaxing music when she heard her phone ding. It was a text from an unknown number saying, I'm outside. Jade screamed, causing Steve to rush in and see the text. So Steve checked the cameras through his phone and saw a tall man was at their doorstep. The man stood there for about five minutes before leaving in the direction of the woods. This was a screenshot of the man standing at the door with a black mask over his face. Jade also attached this video she recorded of herself home alone one night while Peter was at work and the man came to the house knocking on the windows as she texts her mother and grandma in fear. After calling the police, they didn't provide much assistance to Jade, only suggesting she change her phone number. Fast forward a few nights, and Jade began to hear her phone go off at around 3 a.m. It was the same unknown number calling her. She didn't pick up the call, and about a minute or two later, Jade's phone vibrated, notifying her of a voicemail left from the number. This was the voicemail. I don't have a house. I don't have any friends. No love. I have nothing to lie on. I have no eyes. No fear in me. I have no meaning. But I have this urge to kill. This is my world. And I'm the one who controls this. It's not a bloody game. I'll take you at any time. And you can do anything. I know you best, where you are, how fast you can run, and what scares you. I'm real. I'm not a legend or story. I took the souls. The next morning, Jade and Steve went to the police station together to show them all the proof of what was happening. This was fairly recently that Jade sent me this, and the case is apparently still under investigation. She says the man still occasionally leaves unwanted gifts to this day. On November 21st, 2018, at around 1 in the morning, a young man named Dylan received a very strange and alarming voicemail. At the time he received the voicemail, he was asleep and didn't notice it until a few weeks later. This was the voicemail. Hey Dylan, I just wanted to know why is your bed that color? It's a really nice looking ass in the closet. It's a really nice blue and white bed. And tell me, what is your favorite scary movie? Or are you a scary movie? Dylan said he had no idea who the girl was. He didn't recognize the voice. Yet whoever it was had his number, knew his name, and knew the color of his bed, blue and white. The girl on the other end claims to have been in his closet, and whether that was true or not, the intent of the call was obviously to scare Dylan, and admittedly, it would be a very unsettling voicemail for anyone to listen to. At the end, she asks what his favorite scary movie is, which could have been a reference to the movie Scream. What's your favorite scary movie? Uh, I don't know. Dylan reported the call to the police, who apparently weren't able to help since Dylan had taken so long to report it. 
When he would try to call the number back, it would dial to a weird random number, which led to an invalid number error. Completed as dialed, please check the number and dial again. A lot of women's worst fear are stalkers. People like the guy you just heard about in Jade's story. It's a much bigger and more common problem than most people realize. The voicemail you're about to hear was sent on December 14th of 2022 to a girl named Sasha. Sasha lives with three friends from her sorority in a house that they rent in Syracuse, New York. Sasha met a seemingly nice and normal guy while out in town with her friends. They spoke very briefly and she gave him her number. The man's name was Jeremy, and he doesn't go to school at Syracuse University like Sasha does. Rather, he was a local in the area. The two arranged to go on a date for drinks and dinner at a nearby bar. According to Sasha, the date didn't go well in her opinion, as he radiated unusual vibes and she thought he was weird. She split the bill with him because she knew there wouldn't be a second date and she wanted to do the right thing. He dropped her back home after the date and sent three texts later that night about how much fun he had and how much he liked her. It added to the discomfort for Sasha. Instead of responding, she hearted one of the messages, but the text continued on and on every single day, until the point that she decided to block him. Unfortunately, this was not the end. On the night of December 14th, at 2.15am, when everyone in the house was asleep, Sasha got an anonymous call that left this voicemail. Sasha. At the end of the call, you could hear a door shutting. This was the front door of Sasha's rental house, and the sound of the door closing alerted one of her housemates, who woke up everyone in the house to ask who just shut the front door. All four girls were in the house though, and it was none of them. This was when Sasha noticed the voicemail and listened to it with her housemates. What Jeremy left on the kitchen table was a stuffed animal turtle, Sasha's favorite animal which she mentioned on her date with Jeremy. Alongside it was a Christmas card that simply said, Merry Christmas, from Jeremy. This prompted the girls to call the police, and Sasha showed the police officer the texts and the voicemail. The voicemail was self-incriminating enough, and the non-stop text from Jeremy backed up the story. It was enough for the police to find Jeremy and charge him for breaking and entering and stalking. He only did a week in jail and was sentenced to community service and multiple fines. It's been a month and a half now, and Sasha has not heard from Jeremy. In the year 2015, an elderly woman from Greeley, Colorado with failing vision received this voicemail you're about to hear on her landline phone. In a panic from hearing the voicemail, the woman called her son from the neighbor's phone in a state of hysteria, stating someone had taken over her home phone. Her neighbor checked out the phone for her, and after telling her it was okay, she calmed down, but a few days later, it happened again. The woman was truly petrified this time and once again went to her neighbor for consolation but this time refused to go back to her house. Her neighbor called the woman's son to tell him about the situation, so the son took time off of work and traveled to Colorado the next day to help her. After testing the phone to see if anything was wrong, it seemed completely fine, but he planned to stay with her the following week to make sure she was okay. The son was horrified when he discovered what was really going on. When she had lifted the receiver, rather than the dial tone, she heard this message. Connecting you. Please hold the line. NORAD, AWS, Station Zulu Foxtrot 77. Zulu Foxtrot 77. Status alert CON 4. Status alert CON 4. Security tracing in progress. The message would come around the same time every day for the next few days, between 7pm and 7.15pm. Any other time of day, there was a normal dial tone and the phone worked normally. The weirdest part was that the phone wouldn't ring at these times. 
The recording was heard instead of the dial tone if they lifted the receiver to make a call between 7 and 7.15 p.m. The son recorded the message, and the next day, the phone was dead for most of the day, unusable. Upon calling the phone company, they said they couldn't do anything as nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary from their end. That evening, the son tried to take another recording to see whether the message had changed, but it was just the dial tone now. The message was never heard through the phone again. The mother was still afraid to pick up the phone for a long time after this, causing the son to post the recordings online to see if anyone on the internet would have a clue to the meaning behind the recording. And while some people suggest that it may be some kind of secret government message or code, no one seems to know for sure. On October 29th of 2009 at 10.45 a.m., Braxton McCannon's mother kept receiving calls from his sister's phone. This was strange because Braxton's sister was home at the time. So as Braxton's mother left her room to go ask her daughter why she was calling her, she met her in the hallway. Braxton's sister was already on her way to her mom's room to tell her about the phone mysteriously calling her mother over and over again and how it was scaring her. It was not her who was making the phone calls. It was her phone itself. The phone was currently still inside her room as they were talking, and during that time, Braxton's sister's phone called their mother again. This was proof to their mother that it was in fact not her daughter making the phone calls, as she was standing right there. This chilling realization wasn't the creepiest part though. This time there was a voicemail left after the call. In the voicemail, you can hear Braxton's sister's radio playing in her room. Then, unexpectedly, the radio cuts off and a completely random, disturbing sound starts blasting into the phone. The sound almost resembles a horrific screaming. Braxton noted that what's extra weird is that if this were a ghost dial, meaning any form of accidental call, the phone would have left a substantially longer message. But instead, it just hangs up after a few seconds on its own. <laughs> 